Clean Mesh is one of our oldest and one of my favorite options inside of HardOps, and all it does is it cleans coplanar, collinear, degenerate, and duplicate faces in vert. So it's kind of a cleanup of sorts for meshes whenever you have issues when you're doing a Boolean workflow. Another interesting aspect of Clean Mesh is that in the control tilde, Mesh Clean has its own area where you can basically configure how it behaves preemptively. By default, we have it where it behaves on what you have active and it will unhide the mesh and delete interior faces, which are things that you can toggle off. To show it in action, we can just get in here and just control R, just roll the wheel, just add a ton of loop cuts. And for the most part, these loop cuts may be needed in order to build a certain shape, but maybe all of these loop cuts aren't needed in order to build this shape. Maybe I would like to now restore this back to its most primitive form in order to actually deal with this. So I could press Q, go in and clean mesh, and it looks like nothing happened, but when we go in edit mode, we see that this mesh has been restored to its most primitive state, allowing me to manage it in a lot easier of a condition than before when I had all that additional geometry. So one of my favorite workflows is to get in here, uh, create something, dissolve it, clean it up, and then use something like either dice or loop cut to put my geometry back in here. For something like this, I can't actually put loop cuts back across the front. So for that reason, dice exists, which, you know, we're jumping ahead of ourselves here. But when it comes to using dice, you're able to basically force geometry where geometry normally can't be forced. So basically I've turned this into a logical shape now for hard, for at least hard surface needs. So I can take this and add a lattice to it and add a Z span, grab this, distort it, grab this piece, move it out, you know, begin a adjusting the spans on it, adding additional things, and then maybe finally grabbing the uh, tippy top most points and adjusting their end point to go for a particular result. And even from this point, I could still go and add booleans to the mesh, but it's because of clean mesh being a uh, type of management tool that we're able to um, add additional functionality to um, how you would normally be dealing with and interpreting shapes. I mean, even with something like this, I could still just apply visual geometry to mesh the quickest way to apply, get in here and just clean the mesh to just remove everything that's considered degenerate. I might want to slide this away, but the only reason I'm actually doing these slides to move these edges away is so that I could control click bevel to add a bevel. And we see that with the bevel, it didn't actually grab this edge, which would be nice to have beveled. So of course, I'll remind everyone again that by holding Alt and rolling the wheel inside of Bevel, you can lower the angle on the fly to really get it down to the angle that's needed. And then the fix shading, that's just a matter of Alt clicking Sharpen, or you can go to Add Modifier and just click on Weight at Normal, which is the more classic way to do things. But just keep in mind that anytime you need to dissolve useless geometry that isn't needed, you're able to just go in and just use Clean Mesh. And this also exists in Edit Mode. So let's say I had this area just subdivided. I could press Q, go in edit mode under operations and the option of clean mesh is still there. And we can actually press F9 to utilize the ability to use selected on this. So we can actually dissolve only the selected area, leaving the rest of the mesh undisturbed and we're back in object mode, able to keep working.